All right, guys, focus, focus. All right. We have a, what's special about this triangle? Uh, I can't really. What's special about this triangle? It actually says it in the thing. It's a right triangle. So what theorem can we use to figure out what this side length is? The what? The Pythagorean theorem. All right, so if we're, I'm going to get new markers. Pythagorean theorem. All right, and so what that says is it says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So in any right triangle, it doesn't matter what it is, any right triangle, this is the ratio of the sides. So what this says is a squared, so one of the legs plus the other leg equals a hypotenuse. So it doesn't matter which letter you use for AC, I'll just put A, that's what we're looking for. And so it doesn't actually calculate it out over here, it just says, well, what would I do to solve it? So how would I set it up, essentially? So I'm going to show you where they get these answers from. So I'm going to plug in, well, I don't know A, so I'm going to leave it as A squared. I'm going to plug A in for B, because that's my other leg. So plus 8 squared equals 17 squared. 17 is always the hypotenuse. Or sorry, C is always the hypotenuse. Then, how do I get A squared by itself? Because look, I don't need to go ahead and square these because every single one has a 17 squared or a 17 or something like that. So then just subtract 8 squared from both sides. So I get A squared equals... Uh, 17 squared minus 8 squared. Is that our final answer? Why not? Well, what do we have over here? What do we want? A. So how do I get A? No. All right, kind of dividing. What are we doing here? A, A squared. What's the inverse of squaring something? What? What did we talk about last week? Well, we, I know, the weekend. I'm sure you talk about that a lot. Oh, yeah. what, what is the what's the inverse of squaring something? What did we work on last week? Simplifying what? Radicals. What's another word for a radical? Square root. The inverse of squaring something is the square root. So I'm going to square root both sides. And that will give me just A equals the square root of 17 squared minus 80 squared. So that's our answer because it's right here. All right, so this is the type of question they ask on the ACT. Not necessarily can you find out what the exact answer is, but can you work the problem enough to where you can rewrite it and so it's all one step. Right? Does that make sense? The ACT, I mean, it tests you to see what you know, but it, the questions are a little different sometimes. That's why it's tricky more so than the stuff on there you've all seen. It's just they ask it in weird ways. All right? Questions on this one? All right, today we are starting a new section. It kind of goes with what we did last week. But now we're talking about these radical equations. And so, <coughs> for these radical equations, I mean, it's that radical equation with the definition right next to it, I mean, a radical equation is exactly what the definition says, or the name says. It is an equation including a square root. All right? There's no other way to explain a radical equation any simpler than that. So we're taking the equations that you've solved before that have variables in them, but now 
we're including the square roots. All right, so the plan is to do the top half today, bottom half tomorrow, and Wednesday, or when do I have y'all? Thursday? Thursday? Thursday, we'll do some sort of review. All right, I'll try to find a way to put y'all in groups, maybe do a little competition between the groups. We'll do some review Thursday. We'll quiz just on this section on Friday. All right? This is kind of a weird section. Um, there's some nuances between the top half and bottom half that we need to. No, it, all right. Let me try that. <laughs> this part won't be too terrible. This part gets a little tricky because we got to check. It's just the way the numbers work make it a little difficult. We got to check. Last week I thought I knew what I was doing. Can we see ourselves? No. Uh, no. All right. So first thing first. All right, to solve. These are, anytime I put steps up here, they're general steps. So even though it looks like there's three steps, you may have to do an extra step in there to actually complete that step. So like isolating the radical on one side, that may or may not take one move of a number to isolate the radical. Make sense? I may have to add a number and then divide by a number. Or I may have to add a number and then multiply by a number. It just depends on what's going on. Squaring both sides, that is indeed one step. I can only square both sides once. And then solving is just we're solving for x. After that step number two, so when it says solve for step number three, that we're back to equations that we've seen before, like 4x plus 5 equals 7. It's back to those types of equations that we've seen before, those multi-step equations. So let's look at number one. All right, step one, isolate the radical. So when I say isolate the radical, I want to get this entire piece by itself. So what am I doing? Subtract two from both sides. So from there, I'll get 3x plus 2 all inside my my square root still equals four. Sorry, what? Who's minus three? Oh, but, but I did. I'm confused. Wait, wait, what? Who's minus three? Oh, oh, thank, 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 thank. I was so confused about which one you're talking about. Now, here's something that we need to remember. This radical keeps us from keeps us from moving anything on the inside of it out. All right. So at this point, don't write this down. I could not add two to both sides and just have the square root of three x. That's not what we. That's not what we're doing. We can't do that. Math does not allow us to just add or subtract or multiply or divide something outside of a radical. So what we're going to do is we'll square both sides. Because remember, just like we were talking about in the bell ringer, if I square a square root, they're inverses, so they undo each other. So that nicely just gives us whatever's on the inside of the square root. So 3x minus 2 is going to give us, or equal, what is 4 squared? 2. No, other way, other way. Mm. All right, you're, you're, you're taking the square root of it. 16. Remember, the little 2 up here means I'm taking that number multiplying by itself. The radical bar means I'm taking the square root. That means I'm making it small. All right. How, now, we're back to our multi-step equation that we've been doing since the beginning of the year, hopefully. So, what do I do now? Good. Add 2 to both sides. So, we'll get 3x equals 18. 
divide by 3. So x equals 6. That's it. That's it. Today, that's it. So, as you'll come to see tomorrow, we like when the variable's on the inside of the square root. It makes our problem a lot easier. Tomorrow, we'll talk about what happens if there's a variable outside the square root. But today, it's just this. Two. What am I doing first? Isolating. Isolating. How do I get that by itself? Uh, All right, well, hold on, hold on. Remember. Get what? Yeah. All right, so remember, I want this whole thing by itself. So anything underneath the square root, inside the square root, I can't move at. So what's the only number outside of that square root? The 6. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Yep, so then I get 5x plus 1 equals 6. So yeah, then we're going to square both sides again. I've got my radical all by itself. So I'm going to square both sides. So what am I left with on the left side? Five x plus one equals thirty-six. Then I'll subtract one. Five x equals thirty-five. Good. Divide by five. X equals seven. We good so far? We've got some number on the outside attached to the square root, right? So we're gonna. So what we're really looking for is we're looking to get this by itself. We're just looking to get the square root of x by itself. So to do that, I'm gonna start the same way I did last time by doing what? Subtract two. Good. Subtract two. So I have five square roots of x, not two, equals ten. Now, mm. Bailey, Sorry. read that left side for me, that 5 root x. How well would I read that mathematically? 5 square root x plus 2. No, 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 no. This right here, this right here. How would I read that including the operation in between the 5 and the square root of x? Do you know what? What I'm, what I'm asking. A little confused. All right, so I have five. Like you said it right the first time. You said five square roots of x. Yeah. Well, there's technically an operation, addition, subtraction, <coughs> multiplication, in between the five and the square root of x. What is that operation? Multiplication. multiplication. So that is really five times the square root of x, correct? Yeah. So how do I get rid of that five and move to the other side? Divide. Divide. We do the opposite. So even though there's no multiplication symbol there, that's, that's still what we got to do. Oops, delete the zero. 
So I'm dividing by 5 first. I'm not squaring that side yet. I'm dividing by 5 first. Good, Bailey, by the way. But square root of x equals what? 2. Two. Now this time, it happens to be that when we square both sides, it actually solves our problem for us. So when I square both sides, what does x equal? <coughs> when I square both sides, what is x going to equal? So what's squared? All right, no, the x is by itself. It's not squared. Four. Two squared is four. All right, y'all try four. Then we'll go over it together. I'll try four. <clears throat> All right, so now let's look at this. What's the first thing we're going to do? Minus two plus two. Add two. Plus two. Add two. <laughs> So I'm going to get the square root of c minus 3 equals 6. Good, we square both sides. Good, alright, so yeah, good. Whenever we, take, whenever we take a square root and square it, the only thing that's left is what's underneath it. So we don't square any of the things underneath the square root, it just is left down there, so we get c minus 3 equals 36. Last thing we're going to do is add 3. So we get c equals 39. I think this is going to be a good unit, a good section, just because it's going to remind us a little bit on how to solve equations. Like, for the most, I think most of us are good, but some just need to have that little review today to kind of get back in the swing of solving equations. I don't think y'all have done it in a while. I think we've been, think we've been on simplifying radicals for like three, four weeks. All right, let's go through this last one. <laughs> Did he just say the answer? Oh my gosh. All right, what do I do first? Subtract 4. Subtract 4, good. Now look, if a number is out front like this 4 is, the only way that you're going to add 4 is if there is a negative sign out front. So the number out front is a little different because it's not, it doesn't have the plus or minus necessarily. So if it's just the number, there's no sign in front of it, we're going to subtract. So h plus 1. So h, the square root of h plus 1 equals what number? 10. Megan, what am I going to do next? Oh, I forgot I had two megs. Not, not subtract 1. Don't you square it? Square. square. Remember, guys, again, A. Both of those numbers, both the H and the 1, are underneath the square root. So if they're both underneath the square root, I've got to square it first to get rid of the square root. Okay? So I do that. So I'm going to square both sides. So I'm just left with H plus 1 equals what's 10 squared. 100. 100. And then I'm going to do what? Subtract 1. So I get h equals 99. Alright, hey guys, look, look, listen for a second. 
a couple of people, hey, don't go flying through these. All right, that's my biggest um, tip for y'all, is don't go flying through these. A couple people just, they know how to do it, they just miswrote it from the step above it to the bottom. Like somebody miswrote, they wrote a positive three instead of a negative three. Well, they forgot to rewrite the square root. Guys, listen. They forgot to rewrite the square root here for the top one. So instead of having the square root of h plus 1, they just had h plus 1. Y'all know from what I just saw, y'all know how to do it. Don't forget to just rewrite the question correctly. Don't go flying through it. Now, before I give you, or I'm going to give you the homework. It's page 644. So here's today's homework. We're going to do that tomorrow. Alright, here, look, listen. Uh, two things before I let y'all get started. The homework's here. I also put it up there because I'm about to show you something on the screen. But, I'm going to check this tomorrow. If you finish before I leave today, show it to me. I'll check it off. You don't have to worry about showing it to me tomorrow. But then, now, I've written the code for our Google Classroom on the board over on the left. It is XA6, that's supposed to be a 6, not a B, P-Y-R-Y. So I'm going to pull that up. What this is going to do is it essentially is a blog. Y'all have used this, right? Have y'all used Google Classroom? So I'm going to use it essentially as a blog to post notes and announcements, stuff like that. So. The way I'm going to use it is I've already put it up. My first period is the same class as y'all, so Algebra 1. So I've already put up the notes for today. So when you log in and join the classroom, it looks something like this. Well, each day you know how it works. I put this up there, so tomorrow I'll put the notes up and it'll just move it down. And so the most current day is going to be on the top. And so if you go home and you forget how to do something, Check this. You can check it on your phone, you can check it on a computer. Once you join, it doesn't matter. But it's got exactly what I wrote with y'all up there. Alright, so I'm going to put this up there every day. Like tomorrow, we're going to do the bottom. So tomorrow, it'll have both things filled out. It'll have Tuesday night's homework at the bottom as well. So every day, this is just going to keep adding on to it. For y'all to check. If, you, if you're not here, you can go on and check and see what you missed and try to get a little bit working before you come back. So you, maybe you have a little more um, specific questions. Say you try to look at something and you're not sure what happened. You <coughs> understand the first part, but not the next. Maybe you can do that and ask more specific questions. And so like today, I put, here's today's notes. We have a quiz on this on Friday. So that's how most of them will be, just little snippets of what's going on. Alright, so if you join this by, I want you to join it by Friday. If you join it by Friday, I'll give you bonus. Alright, I'm going to give you a little bit of bonus if you join it by Friday. If you join it afterwards, I still want you to join it, but I won't give you bonus. I don't know, I'll probably add it on to either the quiz that we had Friday or the quiz we had this Friday. Alright, so Friday, I'm just going to check and see how many people have joined, and just give them bonus based on that. Alright, did y'all get the homework? No, actually, I'm going to do this. I can use it up here. Alright, there's some examples if you need to look at and see what to do. If you get done, show it to me in the class. Make it easy. Get this done before you go home. Before you go home. Yeah. I know that kind of beats the purpose, right? But it really doesn't. If I don't get it done, do it. Yes. Don't get I won't do it. It has three inside the rattle. So watch it. Square. You almost didn't catch it.